Hello everybody, this is Abba. The eve or the evening of my uh, birthday, today is the 12th of July. Here I am outside my favorite Benny's. I, I think it's the 103rd and Metcalf. Yep, this, I treat myself to a two berry or two fruit pancake mix with two scrambled uh, eggs. Uh, fruit cup, I have a fruit cup with me, right there, and uh, I'm in LB2, LB2, the wife's a little tear, that I'm still paying for, the other one's paid off, and reflections on being 81, I feel wonderful today, I really feel very good. Thank God. I'm still with private security at Rockwell. I would like to exit that club. I enjoy the location. I enjoy a lot. But I've been there going on six years, and it's time to elevate. And I think elevation will come with... Um, an improved level of gratitude. And I just picked up some new meds tonight. Um, an improvement on so-called heart medicine. I've got some penicillin, VK500, I think, for an exclusive, what was an excruciatingly, ah, do I see it? an excruciatingly painful tooth. I was at the emergency room last morning, last evening, rather, from 10 until about 11. And I took off today, my day, my work date, which was good. I needed the day off to recoup, regroup, review, and renew. Glad I did, glad I did. I've been listening to a lot of my, one of my favorite comedians and persons, people, Steve Harvey. Steve has really graduating into his gift of taking information and turning it into inspiration. He's a great comedian, a great person, and I'm really appreciating the sage advice that he's delivering now through the YouTube program that his uh, his publication or his uh, crew is putting out. They're doing some great work for him, and he has a simple around him stage managers and production people and good video people and excellent people that are putting together a very good package around him. He hasn't become, he hasn't descended into being guru, but he has ascended into being a brother sharing wisdom. Thank you, Steve Harvey. If you haven't listened to some of his motivational work, by all means do. You will profit from it greatly. He gives what Tony Robbins called value, but Tony doesn't describe what value is. Tony speaks in these general terms that he fascinates a lot of people. He fascinates me, he still fascinates me, but, you know, Tony Robbins, what's his heart? He does well, he means well. He's 61, 62 now. Steve is 61 and 62, but I find Steve a little bit easier to be with, to take. Steve speaks from a heart center that I feel that Brian Tracy speaks with. I adore Brian Tracy. He's a dental, thorough, sort of stuff. Hitting Tony across the head, but then saying Tony does well. Tony, Tony does Tony. Tony has created 
his coaching in a way that is, you know, right for his audience. Steve has his own audience, but he's, he has a, a way of putting it. I like it. I like too what Steve could think about. You begin to live when you live with your gift. I like to identify your gift and go with that. That is one thing that I'm becoming clearer about every day now, identifying my gift. I think my gift is my propensity and inexplicable ability to coach the acquisition of a new language on the part of practically anyone. But first, I discovered that first I have to call Deffenball and get out all the garbage that is in their front hole, perception, identity, self-concept, all of the baggage and garbage that they've allowed to accumulate over years or whatever. I have to get that out of the way, and then, boom, they start to look really like old Kelly Fuentes, who's a delightful girl, and she's learning French. You gotta follow up with her. Kelly, if you see her, I miss you, but I'll be sending you some good lessons, Kelly. Sending you some good lessons. Sending you some, oh, I know something that I can send you the, the begin the demo. I'll send that to you, Kelly. But anyway, my gift is the ability, the genius of my ability to really glom and to pick up a new language, but also to use it and to find the cultural, critical, historical insight in it. I enjoy cultures, excuse me, enjoy that meal. I enjoy cultures because of their historical and interlacing narratives. Every culture, every sociogamy, sociology, sociography, sociodynamics has a narrative that they have, the people of it have created and cultivated over maybe thousands of years, like like the Japanese, like the Egyptians. Although the current day Egyptians are not the ones that built those almighty, powerful, and expressive structures, especially the that the, the uh, Great Pyramid. Oh, did I just utter something there? The pyramid, which is that's not what the builders called that way. They had another name for it. And whoever and whatever they were, they, huh, maybe they left evidence of how they did that, and I think they did. I don't think that whoever they were, or they still are, and I don't see them not leaving some type of a cogent, persuasive, clear message of exactly how they went about that amount of mojo and building and designing and building and putting it together in such a way that it has been there ever since. But nobody, one thing, checks us out. Nobody looked below the surface of the pyramid. Beneath it, beneath it are the aquifers. I bet you never heard about the aquifers. Well, Brother Tesla used a principle much like it. Flowing water beneath it gave an energy which was then used to complement other energies being produced or processed in the above structure. Nobody talks about the aquifer. Nobody but Christopher Dunn really says anything of any critical importance about the pyramids. 
And there's still those many, 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 many people that talk about them as tombs. You won't find a single body or even the mention of a corpse or anything else that has deceased or living or that has deceased from living in the Great Pyramids. There, there are places where uh, mummies are found, but and not in a pyramid. Not you know, won't be. Other interesting thing too, a very interesting feature. And I remember somebody mentioning this. I think it was uh, maybe Graham Hancock, maybe possibly Robin Duvall, someone said that you won't even find any writing, any calligraphy, anything written within any wall of the Great Pyramid, and there are walls galore. The very inner structure has a particular logic to it, a particular harmonic tonality, which I find very wonderful, very engaging and memorable. <laughs> I remember once, while I was thinking about it and looking at it too, I said, well, I think these great engineers, these great precision imbued, these precision intoxicated builders, uh, built this for me. The Abba will be here one day. And we're going to build this for Abba, isn't that an idea, isn't that something? But uh, John Anthony West said something one day and he was talking about blah, 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 he went blah, 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 and he said number, number. And the, the context in which he mentioned number caught my awareness. Number. That's the meaning in everything that the ancients did with regard to their precision. Oh, the devotion to precision, design and building, number. Well, the only number that comes into my critical work are the numbers on page 175 of my book, number one, a book of new healings. On page 175 is what I call the key to meaning, and I think it's the ultimate code. I think it's the ultimate code. I'm just trying to find people who would like to read it. Of the hundreds of books that I've sold or given away, nobody's been able to appreciate the wisdom <laughs> that is in that old book. I'm looking to find that person. To tell you the truth, I really wrote the book for me. Yeah. I had to get something out into the world. Something out there where I could find it, where everybody else could find it, where it would be safe in the public domain, in the dominion of public knowing that would be a record of what is yet to be. And that is the key to mingling. I was even hoping that my lovely daughter, who was quite an academic, would click onto it, but that has yet to happen. Or Jean, her friend, or Ricky, or anybody, Nancy, or anybody of the East. I'm waiting for like one person, that one scholar, to say, oh, I see what Abba is trying to say, I see what Abba is saying, and it will ignite in them even a knowing that will then broadcast everywhere. Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> oh, golly, my life. On the evening of my 81st birthday celebration, 81 years young. Amen. 
Breathe, baby, breathe. Mochi Chigong. Life wish. Be well. Be kind to yourself.